Thanks for joining us. For more great content like this, visit polishingthepulpit.com or search for Polishing the Pulpit in your favorite podcast app. Also, be sure to check out PTP365 for thousands of more videos just like this. You can learn more by visiting 365.polishingthepulpit.com, and to make it easy for you, we've put a link in this video's description. Let's sing a song and study together. and gentlemen, thank you very much for being a part of the virtual PTP meeting. It is such a joy uh, to be able to study the Bible together, and uh, we're so grateful to you for uh, watching these programs, being a part of them, and certainly uh, our love for polishing the pulpit and the work which it does is an encouragement to all of us. So we thank you very much uh, for being a part of the virtual PTP meeting. I trust that as the lessons that you have heard each week, uh, that they have been beneficial to you and certainly uh, will continue to be. Uh, because it's a joy for those of us who uh, are blessed with this opportunity. I, I'm so thankful for the opportunity to uh, present the message that will be presented to you today. Uh, I, I've often said I will preach at the drop of the hat and I'll drop the hat. Uh, because of the opportunity that it gives to us uh, to be able to take the Bible, and that is our goal, and that is to be able to take the Bible and uh, to be able to present it, to plant it into the hearts of many women, boys, and girls, motivate them to obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. As these programs are presented to you throughout uh, these months and leading up to uh, PTP in August, uh, we trust that it will be a great benefit to all of those who are a part of it. So we thank you. Uh, I thank you for, it's just a blessing to me to be able to be a part of it. And so I thank you very much for uh, your participation as well. Please get your Bible. 
Uh, I trust that as we study the Bible together that it will be a source of strength and encouragement to you. In John chapter number 15, Jesus said, I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. That is what we are endeavoring to do, and that is to take the Word of God and plant it into the hearts of individuals and motivate them to do the will of God. Let me encourage you, turn your Bibles to the book of Colossians chapter number 3. Uh, we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 4. Now, uh, I realize that uh, you probably are viewing this uh, maybe at home. I don't know. You, you may decide to take a nap. I, I, but I've often thought, I remember uh, Brother Alan Webster who preaches for the uh, Jacksonville Church of Christ in Jacksonville, Alabama. I remember a story he told one time uh, about a preacher. I, I don't know, maybe he was dull, but it seemed that everyone wanted, they would go to sleep on him. Uh, and he thought, I've got to do something to help these folks stay awake while I'm preaching. Uh, so what he did, he bought a pad for every member, and as they would come into the auditorium, he would pass this pad out to them so they could take notes on his lesson. So while he was preaching, there was a visitor who came in, uh, of course did not have a pad, did not know what was going on, uh, and sat down behind, uh, you know, on a pew, uh, and noticed everybody's writing, you know, everybody's writing something. And so she kind of decided, well, I, I need to find out what's going on. So she looked over the shoulder of the gentleman in front of her to see what he was writing, and he was writing, don't go to sleep, don't go to sleep, don't go to sleep. So let me encourage you to uh, study with us this topic, Christ our center, as we look at uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. The Bible says, if you then be risen with Christ, Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the throne of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. You are dead. Your life is hid with Christ in God. And then the Bible says, When Christ shall appear, then shall ye appear with Him in glory. Now, verse number 5 says, Mortify therefore these members uh, which are upon this earth. So there are certain things uh, that going to have to be done away with. And we'll look at that again in just a few minutes. As you and I look at Colossians chapter number 3, and we look at these verses, we need to understand that in Colossians, Christ is preeminent. Uh, there are so many things there. For an example, uh, in Colossians chapter number 1 and verse number 18, the Bible tells us that uh, He is head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence. If you back up in Colossians chapter number 1, there are several things. For an example, uh, the Bible tells us in Colossians 1, uh, verses 13 and 14, the Bible said, He hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our sins. When he goes in into verse number 15, the Bible says that He is the image of, of the invisible God. So uh, when you and I look at what the scriptures tell us uh, in the book of Colossians, we see the preeminence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as you and I think of His being preeminent, I'm asking this question. Is Christ the center of my life and of yours? Now, in our lesson today, we're going to focus on three things. And these three things will help us uh, to identify the fact, is Christ the center of our life? For an example, number one, here we go. This passage confirms Christ as the center of our life. For an example, in Colossians chapter 3, as we look at verse number 1, the Bible says, if you then be risen with Christ. Now, my friend, you and I need to recognize that in order to be risen with Him, we must be buried with Him. If you go to Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 12, the Bible says that we are buried with Him by baptism. There are so many folks in our world today, and they have this idea, oh, 
Oh, I'm, I'm righteous. Uh, uh, Christ is a sinner. Well, I, I've got a cross around my neck. Uh, I, have a, I heard about one man. Uh, he carried a cross in his pocket, and he said every time I'm tempted to do wrong, I'll put my hand in my pocket, and, and I feel that cross, and it motivates me to do right. My friend, listen to this. The Bible says, if you then be ri you cannot be risen with Christ until you have been buried with Him. That's why the Bible teaches us to be baptized for the remission of our sins. If you go to the book of Romans, chapter number 6, the Bible asks, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know you not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into His death? Therefore, we are buried with Him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now watch this. The Bible says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Now go again to Colossians chapter number 3. If you then be risen with Christ. My friend, you cannot be a part of Christ until you have become dead to the world, buried, and then as you are resurrected from a watery grave of baptism, in that watery grave is where the blood of Jesus Christ washes away our sin. That's 22.16. You remember that and I said to Saul, Now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sin, calling on the name of the Lord. You and I can go to Galatians 3 and verse number 27. The Bible says, As many of you as have been baptized, now watch this, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now again, that goes to Colossians chapter number 3 and verse number 1. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 21, the Bible says, The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward our Father. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38. I'm sure that many of you have heard this passage, you've read it, and maybe some of you have even memorized it. Then Peter said unto them, but now watch this, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. And so the Bible teaches us, my friend. And so in Colossians chapter number 3, if you then be risen with Christ, so you and I need to recognize that this passage confirms Christ as our center if we have been risen with Him. But now let me show you something else as well. And that is... Notice the authority. He said, now, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, what do we understand there? You and I understand, and, and we come to this conclusion. We know, have you ever heard this statement before? Well, so-and-so is a right-hand man. You know what that statement means? Has authority. You know, it's kind of interesting. Several years ago, I was having problems uh, with my air conditioning at home. Uh, man, we had replaced it. We had put in compressors, and I had I had gotten a new unit. I had gotten a new unit, and I hadn't had it in maybe a year, maybe not that long. Was having problems. I called uh, the folks who had put it in, repair it, and they came out and they looked and they said, "Mr. Acuff, you're going to have to have a, a new compressor." I said, "It's only been in there for a year." I said, "Do not touch." That air conditioning, you do not touch that unit at all until I do something. I called the company that made that unit. And I asked them, I said, I want an engineer from your company to come to my house and look at this. Now, it was interesting. I was not even at home. I was out of town in a gospel meeting. Uh, I had one of the brothers at the uh, congregation where I preach at Lithia Springs uh, come over and meet the, in the engineer. Agreed. They, could, they agreed to send a man. When he came and he looked at it, he said, well, I'm going to just tell you right off. The unit is too small for your house. You've got to, you just need a larger unit. And he said, here's what we're going to do. Our company is going to replace this free of charge, everything, nothing. It will cost you nothing, and we're going to replace this free of charge. 
which they did, and it functioned well for many years. Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. That man had authority in order to do that. Now, I want you to watch this. Because the Bible says, Seek those things that are about where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the throne of God. That means authority, my friend. In the book of Matthew chapter 17, you remember uh, in the Mount of Transfiguration that Jesus took uh, Peter and John with him, and the Bible says he was transfigured before them. Oh, Peter got excited. I love Peter. I love Peter's excitement. You know, uh, Peter, <laughs> Peter oftentimes had his foot in his mouth. <laughs> Someone made the statement one time that they made uh, shoe polish with soap in it or uh, toothpaste in it for people who always have their feet in their mouth. And so, uh, you know, Peter, he, would, he was just energetic. And, and he said, Lord, it's been good for us to be here. Let's build three tabernacles, one for Christ, one for Mo, one for Elijah. Now watch this. A voice came out of heaven that said... This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Authority, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, when you and I go to John chapter number 12, and verse number 48, And Jesus said, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my word hath one that judgeth him. The words that I speak unto you, they shall judge you in the last days. Now you know Acts 17, 30 and 31, the time of this ignorance God winked at, now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, for he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained and given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. When you and I go to the book of Revelation, chapter number 20 for an example, uh, John said, I saw a great white throne, and him that sat upon it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of the things that were written in the books according to their works. The sea gave up the dead that was in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them, and they were judged every man according to his works. What did we find? Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. If you and I go to the 22nd chapter of the book of Revelation, and you and I begin to read verses 18 and 19, and John gives a warning that we are not to add to nor take away from the words of the prophecy of this book. Now, folks, watch this. This passage, Colossians chapter number 3, verses 1 through 4, confirms Christ as the sinner because we have been risen with Him, because He has all authority, and therefore, you know, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. But I want you to see a third thing also uh, that confirms Christ as the center. The Bible says, when He shall appear, then shall you appear with Him in glory. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, you remember Paul said, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you saw or not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again the third day, them which sleep in Jesus shall... He you know, we're not, those who are alive are not going to prevent this. And listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says, And the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now watch this. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. This passage, folks, confirms Christ is the center because we shall appear with Him in glory. You know, it's kind of interesting. Those of you who have watched uh, maybe uh, the State of the Union address, and, uh, you know, here we've got the Senate and, uh, you know, the uh, rep House of Representatives and, and the judges and the Supreme Court and, and all these folks. They're, they're in this chamber. Sergeant of Arms, you know, the door's closed. The Sergeant of Arms says, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. The door opens. In walks the president. Doesn't matter who, who, who it is. In walks the president. And he's going down that aisle. Have you ever seen this? These guys out there, they want to shake the hand of the president. They don't even like him. 
but they want to be seen shaking hands with the president. You know, when the president goes from, uh, maybe he's going to go to a state to, to make a speech or to do something, you know what he does? He will take the senators, generally uh, folks of importance from that state, with him on Air Force One, and when he gets over there, these guys are with him. Then, you see, you know what I'm talking about. You know, it's kind of interesting. I was invited several years ago uh, to deliver the opening uh, devotion or whatever you want to call it uh, for the uh, uh, House of Representatives for, or for the Georgia State Legislature. Uh, the, the, uh, the chair or the uh, Speaker of the House, uh, Tom Murphy, uh, was from Bremen where I was the current preacher. And so he invited me to do that opening uh, devotion. I went down and, and made a, a brief uh, speech, read the Bible, had a prayer. Now when it was over, I did not realize I'm down front after, and man, all of these guys come down there who were members of the, oh, brother, they want to shake your hand. I had my picture made with all these dignitaries, and so I'm, you know, you think about that. I remember several years ago, there's a fellow by the name, I don't know if you uh, remember this name or not, uh, but there's a fellow by the name of Mark Victor Hansen. I believe I've got that right. Uh, Mark Hansen uh, wrote, is one of, Jack Canfield and Mark, uh, they wrote a book called Chicken Soup for the Soul. You ever remember that book? You know, they tried to get it published, and old company said, oh, any people are going to read that. <laughs> they sold 11 million copies of that book. But you know what he said to me? I, I, I met him one time. And he said, Larry, anyone whom I hug is a friend of mine. I have my picture made with this gentleman. So I, I must be a friend. Oh, how, you know, you think, well, oh, man, I, I, I need to get, no. Let me, I was having, I was holding a meeting in Gainesboro, out from Gainesboro, Tennessee, Jackson County, Tennessee. Uh, there might be a few folks who've heard of that. But at any rate, I was holding a meeting there. And so a friend of mine in uh, Gainesboro called me one day and he said, Larry, uh, how would you uh, like to have lunch with me? And I said, oh, that'd be great. I'd enjoy that. And he said, do you mind if I invite uh, the local preacher uh, to have lunch with us? I said, no, that'd be great. Uh, so he did. His name was Wayne Wells. So we met at the restaurant and uh, this brother showed up along with Brother Wayne Wells. But with Brother Wells was his son. His son's name was Scott Wells. Now, he is a brother. Those of you may have heard of Joe Wells. He was a brother, or brother, he's a brother, to Joe Wells. His name is Scott Wells. Scott had just been drafted as a center for the Green Bay Packers. So we had lunch. So after lunch, I said, uh, Scott, uh, do, you, do you mind if I ask you some questions? He said, well, uh, no. And I I said, number one, how much do you make? <laughs> well, he told me, two hundred. I think at that time it was $239,000 a year. I said, well, let me ask you a second question. Do you, do you uh, get paid once a month? How, how do they pay you? He said, I get 16 checks. For every game, it's divided up, I get 16 checks. I, I said, uh, now I'm on, treading on thin ground. But I don't know. I said, Scott, let me ask you this. Do you have an agent? Yes. Do you have to pay the agent? Yes. But then here's what I said. I said, Scott, I want to have my picture made with you today. One day you're going to be important, as if he wasn't already. So we go outside, and I have my picture with Scott Wells. Later on, Green Bay, I think, won the Super Bowl. I'm not sure about this, but it seems to me like maybe he was holding the trophy. I'm not sure. Now watch this, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter whether it's a state legislature whether it's an author of a book who's so millions of copies, or whether it's a, a football player that ever, listen to what the Bible says. When Christ shall appear, then shall you appear with him in glory. Let me tell you, my friend, all of the other means absolutely nothing. What is the most important thing? That I appear with him in glory. You and I, in Colossians chapter number 3, the Bible teaches us, so this passage, my friend, confirms the fact that Christ is the center of our life. Now let me, let me go to a second thing. For Christ to be the center of your life, you and I, we all must have a conviction. There must be a conviction on our part. My friend, listen to this. 
when you and I, now I want you to see, there are four things here that will help you and I to understand this concept of conviction. Notice, the Bible says, if you then be risen with Christ, what's it? Seek those things which are above. Do what? Seek those things. Where are they? Above. Those things that are good. Those things that are spiritual. Those things that are righteous. Seek those things which are above. John 7, 17, the Bible says, Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. In the book of Luke, chapter number uh, 13, verse number 24, the Bible encourages us again uh, that we search... You and I, listen, the Bible says in this Luke uh, chapter 13, strive, look at that word, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many I say unto you shall seek to enter and shall not be able. You and I, ladies and gentlemen, when we look at that word seek, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the throne of God. Matthew 6 and verse number 33, the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But I want you to notice a second word there. That is the word set. Set your affections on things above. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the throne of God, set your affections on things above. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in uh, the book of Proverbs, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You remember that? Uh, do you remember what Paul wrote to the Philippian brethren in Philippians chapter number 4? Uh, you know, he, he points this as he said, now, now, think on these things, purity, kind, think on these things. What is he saying to us, folks? He is, the, the word set con, or, uh, carries with it the idea of permanence. It reminds me really uh, of the word dwell. In Psalm 90 and verse number 1, uh, the Bible said, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. And so that word set also carries with it that connotation uh, that here is something that you and I, that, that we are set. When concrete is set, you and I are aware of that. You know, in Hebrews chapter number 12, uh, in verse 2, uh, you look at, uh, Wherefore, saying, we also accomplished about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight of the sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience, and let us do what? Let us run, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Doing what? Say it. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, I want you to also watch this. Not only are we to seek, not only are we to set, but now I want you to see this. We must sever our relationship with the world. You know, look, when the Bible, when Paul writes this in Colossians chapter 3, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth, for you, watch this, you are dead. Your life is hid with Christ in God. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when I obey the gospel, I become dead to the world. I sever that relationship. You and I, you know, the Bible says, love not the world, neither things that are in the world. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, uh, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so when you and I look at this, my friend, and, and we sever, there are so many. You remember what Jesus said, Matthew? He said, man cannot serve two masters. See, the problem is, so many individuals, they're trying to, well, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to kind of hold on to the devil and, and, and hold, hold on to the Lord. No, you can't do that. <laughs> Maybe you've heard the story about the old boy walking along the bluff, and he, he fell, fell off the bluff. And fortunately, not very far off the edge of that bluff, there was a, a tree uh, extending out from the bluff, and he grabbed hold of it. He's dangling from that tree. And he's up there and he said, help, help. And, and he looks up and he said, is there anybody up there to help me? And a voice came out of heaven and said, turn loose of the tree. He looked up and he said, is there anybody else up there? See, you're going to have to sever that relationship, my friend. Are you going to be a Christian? You're going to serve God. You're going to obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you and I must sever our relationship with the world. 
The Bible said in James chapter 4, verse number 4, whosoever is a friend of the world is an enemy. You know, he said, you adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Now, when I first started preaching, I, I thought that was talking about your know, physical uh, adulterers and adulteresses, and certainly it would include that. But the more I studied, the Bible found out, no, he's talking about those of us who are Christians and we commit adultery with the world. We have to sever that relationship. But now I want you to see a fourth thing here. For Christ to be the center of my life, there must be a conviction on my part. I must seek, I must set, I must sever. And number four, I must sanctify. That word sanctify means set apart. Uh, when you and I look at, again, Colossians chapter 3, if you go down, now we went through the first four verses, but if you go down to verse 5 and you read on down through verse number 10, and the Bible says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon this earth, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. And he says this, Paul writes this, and I'm paraphrasing it, but he said, Putting off that old man and putting on the new man. Now, the Bible teaches us. The Bible says, 1 Peter 3, 15, notice what the Bible says. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Sanct set Him apart in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man who asks you a reason for the hope which is in you. Is Christ the center of my life? For Christ to be the center of my life, uh, I, I have to have some confirmation. And we looked at that baptism, authority, and uh, the appearance with Him. If Christ is the center of my life, there must be a conviction, ladies and gentlemen, on my part. I must seek, I must set, I must sever, I must sanctify. Now let me give you the third thing. If Christ is the center of my life, my friend, there are going to be consequences. I'm going to give you three. There's going to be a constant conflict. <laughs> be sober. Be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, is roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. My friend, there's going to be a... Oh, somebody said, well, Brother Acuff, I never run into the devil. Well, you're going the same direction he is because you, you go a different direction, you're going to run into him. See, there's going to be decisions that you and I are going to have to make. We're going to have to choose. You know, Joshua 24, 15, you remember what Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. And so there's going to be that constant... Now watch this. There are going to be crucial choices. There are going to be some choices. You know, it's kind of interesting. And many years ago, my dad was very, very dedicated Christian. And i never forget, we had gone to Florida on vacation. And uh, my brothers and I, we were having a great time. And it was Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, and I see, see this great big old guy come out to the edge where we're saying the motel, boys, come in. Huh? Do what? Well, y'all come on in. We're getting ready to go to Bible study. Do what? Well, what, what do you mean? We're down in Florida. We're on vacation. Don't you know? Let me tell you something. It did not matter to my dad that we were in Daytona Beach. It did not matter to my dad that we were on vacation. What mattered to my dad is it's Wednesday night and there's Bible study. There's a congregation here and we're going to go to Bible study. You know why? There was a choice that had to be made. Now, you look at a constant conflict. You look at crucial choices. And you look, ladies and gentlemen, at certain comforts. See, these are the consequences when Christ is the center of our life. You think about these certain comforts. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I love Romans 8, 28. Oh man, that passage of Scripture is just such an encouraging passage of Scripture. The Bible says, for we know. We don't guess. We don't suggest. We don't think. No. Paul said, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. The Bible tells Philippians chapter 4, Paul said, My God shall supply all of your need. In Matthew chapter number 28, Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always. In Hebrews 13 verse 5, the Bible teaches me that Christ will be with me. 
you and I, when we make the decision to obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and when we make that decision and endeavor to serve Him, there are rewards. And then, of course, ladies and gentlemen, the great reward of heaven. Je uh, Jesus in John chapter 14, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, in the way you know. Jesus said in verse 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Are you a Christian? You know, to become a Christian, all you need to do is hear the Word of God, Romans 10, 17. And then upon hearing the Word of God, you believe in Jesus as the Son of God, Hebrews 11, verse 6. The Bible said, without faith it's impossible to please God. You and I must change our life by repentance, Luke 13, 3 and 5, and Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then we're baptized into Christ for the remission of our sins. You know, maybe you have not done that and you need to do it. Maybe you have done it. But you, you've kind of, you wandered away. you like the prodigal son. I, I, I just, I want to go take my flight and do whatever I want to do. Maybe as a result of hearing some of these messages, my friend, you have made the decision that you need to change your life. Now, let me say this to you. If you need to respond to the invitation of our Lord, if you need to be baptized or to repent of your sins uh, or to come back uh, to the body of Jesus Christ, let me encourage you to contact an elder or the elders of the Church of Christ or gospel preacher of uh, the Church of Christ in your community. I know they would be delighted to assist you uh, or you can contact the elders or the gospel preachers at uh, the Jacksonville, Alabama Church of Christ to uh, sponsor the Polishing the Pulpit program. Uh, any of these individuals would be more than happy to assist you in whatever need you have. May God bless you.